Hello again, EDF friends. Uh, I just recently did a weapon farm video, and um, I wanted to do an armor farm video as well, so this is what I'm going to be doing this time. Um, once again, the reason I'm doing the Japanese version is because uh, the English version just came out recently. I don't have everything unlocked on that version, but this also applies to the English version, so don't worry about that. Um, also, one thing before we get started, I wanted to mention... Um, um, YouTube has the ability to show posts and videos on their on your feed. So um, if you want, if you're interested in in me, like I, I like to uh, post different like news things that happen about EDF. I like to post just different polls. So if you're interested in, in seeing that stuff, make sure to turn on um, posts and videos on your feed, so you'll see the stuff I post. Like today, I posted that um, Iron Rain EDF Iron Rain is set to come out April 11th, 2019 in Japan. So uh, pretty cool stuff. Anyway. So let's get started here. So I'm going to be giving you methods and missions um, for if you want to be at your controller playing while you're farming, or also methods to where if you want to actually leave your controller and leave your system and just just let it come back later and, and farm. So there's gonna be two ways to do that: um, AFK farming or you know, present while you're present there. So um, for arming, I, armor farming, I usually recommend um, playing offline missions. Um, the reason is because there's no limits when you play offline. So you don't have to get to 70% to turn off limits. You just have no limits from the beginning. Also, enemies are a lot weaker. Um, that doesn't apply too much because you're playing on easy usually, but uh, but regardless. And also, um, DLC, of course, once again, is a lot, a lot better uh, for armor farming. So if you can wait a month or two when the DLC comes out, I would recommend that. But if you'd like to go ahead and get started, here's the best missions that I have found. Um, because the main reason DLC is better is because you're always looking for silver spiders. Um, when you're farming armor because they give you two to three item drops per enemy so very very good stuff and there's not as many silver spiders on the main campaign because the main campaign is easier um, one thing different though in EDF 5 um, is that when you play on lower difficulties they change the silver spiders to normal spiders so that makes it even harder to find silver spiders at least on easy so um, as far as if you're doing AFK farming what you're going to need is you're going to need like you're going to need a collection ring for Ranger, because Ranger now can collect items very easily. Um, he has a thousand percent increase to his collection ring, which is a very nice item. Of course, you can also use the lower percentage ones as well, but um, I recommend um, either a collection ring for Ranger, or you can use a vehicle to collect the items for Air Raider, because his, his vehicles now have big collection rings around them as well. So, like, say you bring, you know, a Titan, and, you know, a Titan is a huge collection ring, or just, you know, a normal vehicle can also work as well, but, uh, Titan is pretty nice for that nice collection ring. Um, now, as far as weapons, when you when you do armor farming, the thing you're looking for for weapons is you want something very quick reload, or you want something like for fencer where you can offset your firing. Like, for, say, for example, if you take two jackhammers for um, fencer, um, you can you can uh, have you can start firing one, and then you can wait when it's halfway down on its magazine and start firing the other one. So that way, when the first one runs out, the other one is still going. And then when that one goes out, the first one will start firing again. So you can constantly go back and forward. Um, also, uh, for weapons, if... Well, also, let me mention this. Um, the PlayStation 4 controller, the stock PlayStation 4 controller, if you look between the R2 and the R1 button, when you press down the trigger, the R2 button, there's a gap in between the R1 and R2 buttons. So if you want to just set your controller down, while you're away, you can put something in between that gap to stay so that it keeps pressing down your trigger for you. Um, I, I usually put like a toothpick in there and it'll keep the trigger pressed down for you. You can also use a coin sometimes, but sometimes I've had issues with it popping out. But something that you can put into that little gap to keep your trigger pressed down. Just a little tip there. So like I said, you want a weapon that's quick reload. So for Ranger, if you're, if you're taking a Ranger class weapon that you need, um, I recommend taking um, a fireball for Ranger. Um, the reason is because uh, the fireball, not the giant fireball, but the uh, the normal fireball, which is, there's like one level 79, there's one I think 39-ish, uh, the one that has like four shots and it just shoots a fireball on the ground. The reason fireball is good is because um, the fire will constantly be there. Even when you're reloading, the fire will still be on the ground, so therefore you never have to worry about um, having a moment where the enemy could get away from you while you're away from your controller. So fireball's good, or possibly the, um, the shotgun that reloads in one second or less. He also has a few shotguns that do that. Um, let's see where it's at. There's level 77, reloads in a little bit under a second, 0.98 seconds. 
Um, and I think there's another low level one. Yeah, level 60 does as well. So you could pros you could also possibly try one of those shotguns as well to do that. But I, I think fireball is safer. Uh, wing diver always take a rapier. Um, her rapier, the normal rapier, not the rapier thrust. I think it's called the flanex or something like that. But the normal rapier um, that shoots a wide cone um, reloads in 0.5 seconds, so it's constantly be firing and it's always going to kill the enemies fast enough. Uh, for fencer, like I said, you can offset weapons. Um, you can do jackhammers. You know, two jackhammers. You could use two flame throwers with the recoil item, where there's no recoil. You could use two shotguns, two Gatling guns. Just, I recommend two. Honestly, I think two jackhammers is pretty good. But uh, fencer is good. Um, Air Raider, you cannot do AFK farming with his weapons because he doesn't have the ability to just constantly fire and fire and fire and not run out of ammo. Like if you use a vehicle or something like that. So, you'd have to take a ranger, wing diver, or fencer. Um, that, that's why I recommend if you have two controllers to do split screen because you're going to get a little bit more armor that way and in addition you can always farm on the character you need and just use the other character as the killer slash collection ring like take a ranger always or take a you know a wing diver always or something so you can always you know do two classes at once um, because the way the armor works in this game is the first class, the class you're playing as gets the most armor and then the other three classes get um, a fraction of it um, it feels like one-fourth of the armor, somewhere around there, one-third. So that way, if you have split-screen, you can take two classes. They'll get two, two of the classes will get most of the armor, and then the other two classes will get a little bit less. So you can focus on two classes that way. But anyway, um, let's get on to the missions themselves here. So the first mission that um, I recommend, if you have two people, and you also have a decent amount of armor, um, is to play Mission 39. Um, this, this mission is... If you're playing online, this mission is uh, mission 38. But uh, this mission has two silver spider ships in the back, but only on Inferno, unfortunately. On Hardest, they're, they're brown spiders, so it's not good. So if you have the ability to beat this mission and uh, with, with, with another person, with another helper, um, you can just farm those two silver ships in the back and then finish the mission when you're done. And uh, the only problem is this mission is very long, so you have to get to the end. So I wouldn't say this is the best option, but this is one place that has silver spider ships. Um, so if you have, if you're just farming the one one ship, one silver spider ship, you're going to get 24 boxes, roughly 12, 24 boxes in one minute. Where if you have two people, one on each ship in the back, you'll get 48 boxes per minute, which equals out to 720 in 30 minutes or 1440 if you have two people in 30 minutes. Um, but like I said, that's that's a little bit harder to get to because it's the end of the mission. It takes a while to set up. So. The mission I recommend, I've tested so many missions. I tested so many missions. I've tested all the dropships to see how fast they spawn. And 40, is my, in my opinion, is the best. 39 online, of course. Um, the reason it's the best is because you can do AFK on this one, or you can do group farming on this one. Um, the thing is, if you have three people, because there's three different ships, so if you have three people, you can get 30 boxes per minute, which is 900 boxes in 30 minutes, which is the best you're going to probably get on a campaign mission, not DLC, uh, for farming. So um, there's, like I said, there's three ships. They drop very fast. They drop 15 ants each ship every 23 seconds. So that is by far the, the best drop rate for a ship. I tested all the ships, the drop rates of all the ships of all the different levels, and uh, that is by far the fastest. So it's definitely good. Um, and like I said, the more people, the better. You could probably do three ships with two people, it would still probably be fine, but, um, but you definitely want to try and farm as many ships of those three as possible. Um, if you do AFK farming, and you just have one person just doing one ship, then you get 10 boxes a minute. If you do split screen, you can get, you know, 20 boxes per minute, of course, if you have, if you're farming two different ships. Um, so that equals out to 330 minutes, or 600 in 30 minutes if you have the, the two ships with, with split screen. So it's not the greatest, but if you're doing AFK farming, um, you know, that's fine, because you're probably going to come back, you know, in an hour or something, and then, you know, you can just, you know, end the mission then. But, uh, but yeah, three people is definitely the best way to go if you have with this one. Um, let's see. So for Ranger, like I said, I recommend the Fireball Collection Ring or Rapier for Wing Diver um, or Fencer, you know, two jackhammers. And then if you have, um, so you could have, you know, the person that's, like if you're doing split screen and you you want to have you want to have you want to just leave the controller and leave the the console, you can just put a ranger there with a collection ring right at the bottom of the ship, and then have um, either him fire or if you 
you know, have another another character, a wing diver, then you can just use the rapier and she'll kill everything and he'll collect everything with his ring. So you can just leave that be and then come back later. But um, but yeah, that's that's the best you're probably going to get for the campaign. Um, and if you have a group, it's not too bad. You know, 900 boxes in up to 30 minutes. But you have to remember that it's 900 boxes, not 900 armor. So that's something definitely to keep in mind. Um, some other missions that are decent um, are also, like, if you want to do, you can do mission 71 here, which is, has a bunch of frogs, uh, tadpoles that come out of these anchors and the ants. Um, what you can do is you can trigger all the anchors and then stand. You want to stand near, let me go ahead and start this mission up really quick and show you where to stand. You want to stand near the second ant pillar because the ant pillars will stop looking at you and stop coming after you if you're not clear, near, close enough to them. So what you can do is, to get the most amount of enemies coming after you, of course I have the wrong weapon set up here, um, is you want to stand near this pillar. Um, and then that way you pull both sets of ant pillars to you. And then you just go ahead and you just go ahead and trigger all the uh, pillars. Just attack all these pillars out here, and then all these frogs will come after you and attack you. You can just stay right here and just farm everything that's you know. You can farm the ants, and you can farm the frogs that come in. Um, it's not the greatest. That's why I don't recommend it as the number one farming mission. But it is something you can do, like to change it up, to mix it up a little bit. Another good mission is uh, let's see, mission 50 is also okay, um, which is 50. Um, offline and 49 online. This is just a bunch of D-Roys. What you can do is you can put it on easy, use your Mirage, your best Mirage, and just take out all their legs. And you get a bunch of boxes that way because all the legs drop items. And, but the problem is you can't, of course, you know, farm this for a long time. You have to reset the mission once you're done and do it again and then do it again. So this is also a decent one. Um, and actually a very good mission is that I recommend is close to, close, close to as good as mission uh, uh, 40 offline at least, is uh, Mission 99. Mission 99 is very good because it has five pillars at the end. Um, I think it might be four pillars on easy, but it has it has pillars at the end in the giant room with the king spiders at the very end of the mission, and these pillars will spawn enemies every 20 seconds. So that's pretty close to the same spawn rate as the, um, the ships in Mission uh, 40. But the only difference is they don't drop 15 ants like that, you know, like Mission 40. But still, very good mission if you want to farm a lot of enemies in this, in this, at the end there in the pillar phase. So that's also something to think about. Um, there's a lot of missions that are that are pretty bad um, because, like, the problem is there's a lot of good missions that have like a lot of anchors, a lot of enemies. But the problem is a lot of those missions will stop looking. The enemies will stop looking at you um, if you don't like, keep attacking the pillar, and you don't want to have to babysit a pillar to keep um, having enemies come after you. So like for example mission 84 is good. It has a bunch of large pillars but the problem is if you stop attacking near the pillar the enemies will stop chasing you so not too good because of that. Uh, mission 80 also is the same thing. has a bunch of pillars in the middle of like a, a base but the problem is once again if you're not attacking those far out pillars they'll stop coming after you so you're not getting as many enemies as you would think you'd be getting on a mission like this. So like I said I tested a lot of missions. And um, like I said, I really think 40 is the best for um, solo or for group farming. Um, the reason I say DLC is better and maybe wait for DLC is because um, DLC, the, the, the mission I, the, I have, I have a mission or a video I made for DLC pack one, mission seven, that is the armor farming video that I recommend for DLC. And the thing with that mission is you actually get, the difference is you get 20 armor boxes in one minute compared to this one is this mission is where you only get 30 boxes per minute so you know if it's if there's four different item boxes a large health a small health armor and a weapon if each of those is 25 percent chance then you have to cut that number in one fourth so um, you have to keep that in mind so I, I think that DLC is by far the better better way to do it and I really like my mission one or DLC pack one mission seven because you get 600 armor in 30 minutes, which is which is really good. Um, and plus, you can also AFK that farming and, and just leave it and come back later. So, pretty nice. But anyway, so but that this is probably the best I recommend. Mission 40 here. Let me uh, let me go ahead and take Wing Diver here, and uh, let's take let's take a Rapier, and let's take Snipers. Actually, no, let's take Mirage. I just want to show here really quickly the ship and. Uh, 
also something you can do with this mission is you can actually uh, I think I'll take something longer range than that mission 40 here so what you can also do is you can use the NPCs as well because there's NPCs on this mission and you can let them kill all the enemies for you as well but I don't think you're gonna need necessarily the help on easy because if you're playing offline you can turn the limits off and you have you can do it all yourself but pretty fine but uh, these ships here are gonna come and land and open up once you clear out this first phase so I'm just going to go ahead and clear this first phase out and you'll notice that there's a bunch of enemies that come out of these ships and I'm not sure why it is that way because other missions do the same thing where a lot of enemies will come out of a ship but the problem is the difference is they'll stop after the first wave they'll start you know, spawning normal number of enemies, not the, the excess number, but this particular mission uh, spawns excessive number of enemies the whole time, uh, non-stop, which is pretty cool. Also, if anyone knows, am I crazy, or did they change the spawn places of the spiders, the brown spiders on this mission? Because when I played the Japanese version, which you know, I played it when it came out, I was for sure the, the spiders always came out on the left side. But when I played it in the English version, I noticed they came out on the right side. I was like, oh, that's cool. They changed they changed the spawn location for the spiders on the English version. But no, I, I went back to the Japanese version, and once again, the enemies spawn on the right side now, and the fencers are on the left side. So am I crazy, or did they change that spawn through a patch or an update or what? I'm not sure why they would do that, but does anyone else notice that? Because... I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm remembering it correctly. I even think I have a video I could go back and look at and, and see that um, it was it was true that they spawned on the left side instead of the right. So let me know if you uh, if you uh, notice that too. But yeah, so you have some ants and some drones at the beginning. Then you have some spiders here, and then after that the ships open. So not too long setup really. You set to kill most of these enemies here to spawn in the next phase. And uh, usually when you kill most of the motor frogs, when the phase comes too, so I think there might be one more motor frog. Alright, everything is just about dead, so they should be spawning here. What are you doing in there? There we go, now they're spawning. Now two queens will spawn, but I'm not too worried about them, but as you'll see, they just pour out uh, 15, 15 ants every time, and every 23 seconds, 22 or 23 seconds, so very good. You could take any one of these ships and use it as your farming location. And like I said, you just set up a uh, a wing diver with a rapier, you know, pointed at the, the place where they drop, or you could have, you know, ranger put the fireball right here on the ground where they drop at. And uh, you can technically allow other enemies to come after you. Um, but if you're doing AFK farming, that probably wouldn't work too well. But if you're actually at the controller, you could technically farm all three ships by yourself. The only negative is you're going to notice that you're not going to be able to kill all the enemies that drop each time the ship opens, so you're technically going to have to cut the number in half of how many, um, of how many enemies you'll be able to farm um, per minute, because, like I said, you're not going to be able to kill them fast enough for them to spawn the next number of 15. Because if, if all these 15 aren't dead, then it, the ship's only going to spawn the number that's remaining that you didn't kill. So, like, you know, if you kill, you know, 13 out of the 15, the ship's only going to spawn 13 until those last two are dead. But yeah, so you can, you know, you can just farm all three of these ships right in the middle if you wanted to, but you, like I said, you'll have to do two openings before you can kill all the enemies. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's the best mission that I've found. Um, if you know any, um, better ideas, let me know in the comments, but, um, I feel pretty confident that this is probably the best one for campaign, if you're, um, doing AFK at least. Um, like I said, that mission 99 is probably a close one I would, I would take a look at. Um, with the with the pillars at the end with the king spiders, but uh, I really think I like this mission a lot because just how fast they spawn. So, and I was getting roughly about four boxes per 15 enemies that drop. So that's that's what you have to keep in mind that you're only getting about uh, four boxes. So, which is that's why silver spiders are so much better because you always get two to three boxes per enemy drop. So, so yeah, that's. That's all I'm going to have for you on this mission, This or on this video. This is pretty much um, what I think the best farming method is. So um, that'll be it. So once again, thanks a lot for watching. And remember, EDF doesn't leave a man behind, ever. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please consider liking and subscribing, and also sitting through a couple ads if you'd like to help. It makes a big difference, and I appreciate it a lot. Thanks.